if you can tell us a little bit about your background, where you came from, your family, and things like that. Yeah, of course. So I am a first-generation Chicana Latina student. Um, I am currently in my fourth year of medical school. My family's from Mexico. My parents emigrated here. And it's a similar story that many other minorities can relate to. My grandfather was the first one to come down here. He was making 39 cents a day working in the fields. And then it blossomed into our entire big fat Mexican family. And I just always knew in high school that I wanted to be a physician. And I think part of it had a lot to do with the fact that I was sort of a biology science nerd. And I was always intrigued with the human body and the anatomy and physiology of it. And then as I grew and moved on to more and more clinical experiences, that's when I realized, okay, do I maybe want to just be a nurse? Do I want Mm -hmm. to maybe be a physician assistant? You know, what are the differences and really just figuring out the pros and cons of it all. And Mm -hmm. I realized eventually that, you know, I do want to be a physician because number one, we all want to help people, but Mm -hmm. I want to help people. And there's only 2% of Latino physicians in the U.S. 2% of all physicians in the U.S. are Latino, Latina, Latinx. And Mm -hmm. here in California, especially the latest statistics say that 39% of the population is Latino. So there's a huge deficit there. So I'm happy to say that I'm going to be the first physician in my family ever. Yeah. So in high school, this was back in 2004. I graduated from high school in 2008. So it might be a little different from the kinds of resources that are available now for high school students. But back then, unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of guidance. I think the only closest thing that I remember having was a guest speaker who I think at the time she was doing a master's program. And and so she kind of talked about, you know, the life beyond high school and, oh, this is how college is like, and this is how fascinating it is and that sort of thing. But I, I literally had no idea how or what I was going to do to really make it to getting into a four-year college okay. to get my bachelor's degree first. And so honestly, I just went through community college and it worked out okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to Napa Valley College and I accidentally got an associate's degree just because I was working through my GED and getting all my science courses through to eventually be able to transfer onto a university at that time. So that would say that was my main challenge in high school was really just figuring out the guidance. The grades came with being passionate about what you were studying. Mm -hmm. I took AP classes. Um, I took AP chemistry and I took AP English to sort of better my chances. And I did pretty well. I wasn't like a 100%, -hmm. you know, top, top of my class. I didn't have the best ACT, SAT scores, but I I pulled through and I I think I got like average or so, but that was enough to to get me into four-year college. So there's different core techniques under osteopathic medicine, right? So there's Manual therapy, which essentially involves using your your hands and manually adjusting a joint or articulating a joint back into its normal position or readjusting a tissue like a muscle, a tendon, cartilage, all that. We call it fascia. It's basically what's under your skin. It's fascia, aside from all those blood vessels and nerves that you have there. But all of that is interconnected and we use our hands to manipulate it in a sense, to where it wants to go or to where it doesn't want to go. And there's just a lot more science to it, but that's healing in a sense. There's also what a lot of people consider is quote unquote, cracking your back is the medical term for it is adjustments. And so we were trained in doing that as well. We can adjust your neck. We can crack your back, your spine, your hips, your fingers, everything. And then we're also trained in not necessarily massage therapy, but Uh, There's a different term for it under osteopathic medicine that's just, it's not coming to my mind right now, but there's different terms for it as well. All in all, it involves really just working on the body as a whole with your hands to to heal that person. We also learn lymphatic techniques, really just clearing certain fluids from lymph nodes. Um, We call it like opening the thoracic inlet. We have that large lymphatic duct in in the middle, in the core middle of our body that sometimes can get plugged. And so it's just a variety of techniques that will literally blow your mind. Some of it, some people would, would not consider as helpful as other techniques, but that's what I was 
sort of exposed to in medical school. When I met this chiropractor, he chiropractors mostly do adjustments. That's their core sort of go-to treatment. Most of them, not all of them, but that's what he sort of exposed me to. And I remember he told me like, it would be just so cool if you just went to DO school, right? You can do both. You can mm-hmm. give a patient an infection and prescribe them ibuprofen for their back pain, but also you can actually like physically readjust their vertebrae back into where it should be, right? And guess what? Like it helps, you know, people go to chiropractors for back pain. People go to mm-hmm. physical therapists for back pain too. But when you go to an MD doctor and no offense to, to MDs, mm-hmm. but MDs are, since they're not trained in osteopathic techniques, they can only do so much as to provide you with medication that will help reduce that inflammation, help reduce your pain, but also refer you out eventually yeah. for physical therapy or perhaps even surgery, but mm-hmm. physical therapy first or chiropractic care, et cetera, um, before you consider other more invasive interventions. 